Like most TV shows, you can use a one-sentence description in relation to individual Sharp episodes, and it's enough to bring all the memories flooding back for whomever you're speaking to, assuming they've seen the series, of course. For Sharp's enemy, the line could easily be, the one with Liz Hurley in it, and appreciative nods will begin all round. But here's an interesting thing to consider. When Hurley filmed this episode, she was, well, Liz Hurley, semi-known British actress. She was in all sorts of small parts in shows where, sure, she'd stand out for being a bit posh and quite good looking, but she was far from being a global sensation. In 1992, for example, I recall she was in an episode of The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Just a small part and not really too notable on the whole. But all that changed in May of 1994 when Hurley accompanied her then-boyfriend Hugh Grant to the premiere of Four Weddings and a Funeral, wearing what has gone on to be known as simply that dress. She was instantly famous all over the world. And guess when Sharp's Enemy came out? One month later, June 1994. The timing couldn't have been sweeter. So I thought it might have been of interest, before we get onto the episode proper, to once again delve back into Jason Salke's excellent From Crimea With Love memoir that I read from a couple of episodes back, and we can get the goss on what Hurley was like when she joined the production for this story. Quote, We kicked back at the hotel, turning the fourth floor corridor into a chill-out zone. From the far end of the corridor, a female form could be seen approaching. It was Liz Hurley, looking like a normal woman, not the on-screen goddess image I had of her, but nevertheless lovely, gravitating effortlessly to her rightful place at the center of a group of adoring males. She arrived looking rather disconcerted, not that surprising as your first taste of simply awful, which is Sulky's nickname for where they were staying, Simferopol, could be more than a little unsettling. But it wasn't the thought of having to exist out here in the Crimea that left her distraught. Preying on her mind was the fact that she felt Sean Bean was immune to her charms. Before we had the pleasure of Liz's presence, Dara O'Malley told me of a little walk he took with her where he told her the lads were positively salivating at the prospect of her arrival. I guess she might have assumed Sean was one of those lads. The inhabitants of the fourth floor corridor, chiefly me, feigned no such lack of interest, placing her in a position of near adoration within our club. I assured Liz that Sean wasn't very outgoing, unless he'd had a few bevies. In fact, he was almost shy. He never sought female company, preferring a bar full of the lads. Never once did I see him take advantage of his heartthrob status. And anyway, he was married. And like you, Liz, you don't really need to fancy anyone when everyone fancies you. This last bit I didn't have the courage to say to her face. To our glee, Liz was an Olympic champion flirt, a sport at which we all became highly proficient. Of course, her concerns were purely professional, as in the story her character, Lady Farthingdale, spends a night of passion with Sharp. Never had I wanted to be Sharp more than now. End quote. Well, that was a bit of fun and maybe not something you'd hear every day. And now, on to the episode itself. The first thing you notice about Sharp's enemy is how good everything's looking. Maybe even better than the episode that preceded it, Sharp's Company, which was part of the same production block, along with the story we'll look at next month, Sharp's Honor. Location-wise, and as you heard from that book extract, the production was being filmed in the Crimea, the same as the two stories from the year before, Sharp's Rifles and Sharp's Eagle. But somehow, it just looks better. The direction and cinematography is really good in this one, especially in some early scenes that I'd forgotten before a recent rewatch. So I think it's notable, even here, in just its second season, that Sharp was looking, dare I make the pun, really sharp. Year one to year two was a big leap in quality, as far as I'm concerned, as the production likely became more comfortable and confident with what it was doing. Now, I kicked off this video talking about Liz Hurley, and of course it's her character, Lady Farthingdale, who is at the heart of the story. She's being held captive by a group of deserters and needs rescuing, along with another lady who is married to a French officer. 
Sharp and the French officer find themselves on the same mission essentially to rescue the ladies and hilarity ensues. No, that's not right. Sharp and the French officer find themselves on the same mission and I find this a really satisfying tale all told. It's not a big battle episode based on an historical event like the Siege of Badahoth in the previous story. Instead, it basically serves as a second part to Sharp's company, with Sharp and Obadiah Hakeswill coming up against each other again. Truth be told, it might have been nice if there'd been an episode in between company and enemy, so that Hakeswill escaped in one, then disappeared for an episode, leaving us wondering whatever became of him, before coming back again in the third and final story of the season. But I guess beggars can't be choosers. One thing I was really surprised about on rewatch is how far this story takes the treatment of the female prisoners in the film. In one particular scene, Hurley's Lady Farthingdale is told to show her breasts to Sharp in the belief it will shame her and embarrass him. It doesn't quite work out that way for reasons that will be known to you if you've seen the story. My compliments, man. I think most productions today, however, would have been suggestive of what's going on without actually showing it. However, Sharp's enemy goes all the way, albeit only for a frame or two. Now, I'm far from prudish, but it does feel a touch lecherous and unnecessary, and more than a bit, did they really just make Liz Hurley do that? As the effect on the story would have been exactly the same without it, or if Hurley had just been shown from behind or something. It's only a small part of the story, of course, but I feel it taints the episode somewhat and makes the series overall feel a little pervy for the first time, when, to me, Sharp is more about the history and the fighting and the adventures the guys end up going on. Of course, I never stray too far into spoiler territory with these videos, so let's just leave it at that. This is damsels in distress, Sharp and Hakes will meet again, there's some great action scenes, it has the introduction of the Duco character who will become an absolute thorn in Sharp's side in stories to come, it has the introduction of the Fredrickson character from the 60th Rifles who becomes a great friend to Sharp, and of course it would be remiss if I didn't mention we also say goodbye to a reasonably major character in this story, but per that same spoiler policy, I won't say who it is. And that's Sharp's enemy in a nutshell. I hope you're enjoying these small bites of Sharp episodes that I'm making each month. By the time I've done all 16, you'll be able to play them back to back as a piece lasting probably close to two hours. Anyway, have you seen Sharp's enemy? What did you make of it? Have you read the book it's based on? Which did you prefer? Why not let me know all your thoughts down below in the comments.